Hello and welcome back. Today I've got a guest for our show. Uh, his name's Anthony Johnson. I'm going to introduce him just a little bit here for you. Uh, I met Anthony for the first time in March when I was introduced to him by Rich Cooper, another YouTuber who uh, has a website, has a YouTube channel called Entrepreneurs with Cards. He talks about a lot of red pill stuff. And uh, prior to this, I had become aware of Anthony's work through the 21 convention videos I had seen on YouTube. Uh, these videos featured men sharing their experiences and expertise on all things related to being great men. Everything from fitness to dating and a whole lot in between. Uh, since then, Anthony had invited me to go deep sea fishing and, uh, and, and firearms training with him and a bunch of other guys here in Florida, which was a lot of fun. Uh, where we both live here in Florida, so we were able to link up. It was pretty easy. We've developed a uh, friendship since then. And I was honored to speak at Anthony's 21 Convention Patriarch Edition event that happened uh, this spring, which was great. It was a red pill event for fathers. Uh, and there I shared my ideas on defending marriage in a degenerate age, a uh, video that should be coming out pretty soon. And I'll be speaking at the upcoming 21 convention here in Florida, once again, in October, October 11th through 13th. You can learn more about that at the link below or just search 21 convention, October 2019. I'll be speaking alongside some other incredible speakers as well. You'll learn about that on the website. And I want to thank Anthony for joining me here today. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I'm uh, really <laughs> happy to be here. I was just pulling up the uh, ticket page for uh, going over some stuff, but... Yeah, man, I'm happy to be here. I just, I told, you know, we were talking before the show started. I just got back to America a couple of days ago. I'm still kind of getting back in sync, being back in my home country, in my home state. And it feels good and good to talk to you again, man. You were holding a 21 convention in Poland, correct? Yeah, it was our fourth European event and our first event in Poland. It had been many years since we did a European uh, 21 convention. Yeah, it was in Warsaw, Poland, the capital. And actually just had their, uh, like a memorial for a big uh, uprising they had during World War II the other day, right after we left. Yeah, beautiful city, beautiful country, beautiful people, and beautiful culture. And it felt very at home to bring our event there. And it was fucking awesome. Super good experience. One of the best events we've ever held. I can only imagine. So for those of us who are not aware, can you tell me exactly what the 21 convention is and uh, how it got started? Yeah, I'll do my best. Mm -hmm. So I started it when I was a kid. I was 17 years old. I was right here in Orlando, Florida. Got, I just out of high school about a month. I was at UCF, the college here. I was a few weeks into classes and I had an idea because I was involved in the pickup artist community at that time. I would found it probably about a year, almost a year prior to that. And I wanted to do like a meetup for men, a men for my age, young men at that age, under 21, because I had met a lot of guys like Socrates, you know, the, you know here in Orlando, other speakers and uh, content creators in the manosphere at that point. But they were so much older than me. Even at that point, Socrates was probably like 39, 40, and I was 17 years old. So we had shared interests in getting better with women, but it was such an age and generational gap that I could feel like a big, uh, just a difference in, in age and wisdom of where I needed to go and where he needed to go. There was like different timelines we each needed to go on as a journey. So I had an idea to get together with a bunch of guys my age and do a meetup. And as soon as I put that out in the pickup artist community, guys were giving me suggestions. And they were like, hey, you should have to do like a conference, get some speakers, get a hotel room, all this stuff. And I just took to it very naturally at a young age for whatever reason. And before I knew it, almost exactly one year later, so from July 2006 to July 2007, I put together the first under 21 convention, which eventually became the 21 convention. We had about 80 guys show up from all around the world, including Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Europe, Canada, America, all sorts of states and stuff. And about half came from Florida, like 30, 40 of them. And as soon as it got done, that first uh, convention, it wasn't even intended to be a convention. It was supposed to be a meetup group. Guys were asking me, like, when's the next one? And I was so young. I was 18 at that point. I just kind of blurted out. I was like, oh, next summer, same time. Uh, and then I slowly realized I just committed myself to doing yet another convention, another uh, meetup like that. And I ended up doing that. And as the years went by, I got more and more invested in it and involved. And I almost shut it down, actually, in 2009. That was the first 21 convention, absent the under component, the focus on young men. At that point, it became for all men of all ages, anyone over 18. And at that point, I almost shut it down. I didn't know where I was going to take it. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew it was getting really serious because it was getting larger. We're building up a body of content. And I didn't know if that's where I wanted to take my life. 
but they're reading some books like from Tim Ferriss. Uh, eventually I was named in that book. There was a whole page for me, but, and then Seth Godin had some books too that were very influential at that time. I decided to stick with it and keep doing it and cut out other bullshit in my life at that time. And about a year after that, I actually dropped out of college. I dropped out of UCF. I had failed how to start a business twice in a row as the only student, the only class I'd ever failed in my life and the only student who had a business both semesters and was in the paper. We had a paper back then before, you know, they got rid of that shit. I was in the paper for this stuff. They'd interview me and all that. And uh, so I dropped out of college when I failed that class for the second time in a row. It just, I took it as a sign. I didn't know if it was like some religious thing or whatever, just the universe telling me something, but it was pretty fucking obvious that if I had a successful business for four years at that point and I was failing a class called how to start a business, that there was a big disconnect between school and between, uh, you know, real life and what I want to do in the real world, which is real business. That was risky, you know, fun, exciting, uh, adventurous, all these things. It was gaining momentum at that point too. We were four years in at that point. So I dropped out in 2010. I decided to go with the company full time at that point instead of part time. And I took it to Europe for the first time to Sweden, actually the epicenter of uh, feminism on this planet. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't really the point at the time, but I'm really glad that history played out that way. And since then, it's been getting bigger and bigger. Even in 2010, we had um, Dr. Doug McGuff, a uh, medical doctor, uh, speak at the event, as well as Mark Sisson uh, back in 2010, a big time a health entrepreneur. He just sold one of his companies to Heinz for like $200 million. Uh, one of my favorite guys on this planet uh, in terms of health and fitness and things like that. And since then, it keeps growing, man. The event's kind of grown with me um, over the years. We've taken it all around the world, including to Australia in 2012. We hold it one to three times a year, usually. Occasionally, I'll take a year off, but it's been a while. And I might just keep doing it every year, obviously, for a long time. And also, as the, the event has aged, and as, as I have aged, including you're a really good example of this, but we recently had our first Patriarch Fatherhood edition of the event. And I think that's in part because of speakers who encourage me to do that, like Hunter Drew and Tanner Guzzi. But also, my own interest as a man, as I get older and wiser, I, uh, I've always seen the value in family and building a family and leading a family, but it's becoming biologically or for whatever fucking reason, it's more and more in my mind as I, as I get older. And I really value that. And I think it's really time that we bring that into the manosphere and that we did that with the event recently back in, uh, back in the spring, May uh, 2019. And you were one of the top speakers at it. Your speech was really well received, defending marriage in a degenerate age. What a fucking title. And we keep going from there. You know, it's, it's an event for all men at this point, men who want to become the best versions of themselves possible by their own design and their own leadership. It's not for just preaching and do what you're told. It's like, we're going to tell you stuff and then you're going to figure it out on your own. You have to. So it's very, uh, it's very much for men. It's not for women. We are building a women's convention uh, in the future, spring 2020, called the 22 convention. But that is yet to be uh, created, but that's coming up uh, next year. But for now, it's an event for men and for fathers and uh, for all men, regardless of what you want to do with your life too. Like if you are some young dude and you think pick up artistry and banging chicks is a great thing, you'll learn these things at the event if that's what you want to do with your values. But if you also want to build a family and become a, become a father like that, become a patriarch. Uh, if you want to combat feminism and talk about that, meet up with other men, that's an issue as well. So it's a really diverse conference with a uh, super diverse uh, you know, lineup of speakers at it. We've had guys like you, huge YouTubers, uh, you know, from that space. We've had guys like uh, FBI agent Joe Navarro. We've had Navy SEALs speak at the event, Rich Graham, uh, medical doctors, psychologists, uh, dating coaches, relationship coaches. Uh, the list is fucking huge at this point. Over 150 speakers we have in our history. Does that rant cover? I think that covers a good chunk of what we need to go over with it. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that's incredible. So you've been doing this for a number of years. Definitely looks like yeah. you're in your river doing what you're called to do. What is your big picture mission with the 21 convention? What are you trying to uh, establish, you know, for, not just for yourself, but for the culture? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to create positive media and events for men and destroy the feminist establishment. That's the official tagline of 21 Studios. And eventually we're going to create positive media for women, too, through the 22 convention and work on and help that element of, uh, of culture. So it's positive media for men. And I don't say that, that word is used a lot, you know, positivity, power, positive thinking, all this stuff. But when I say in that tagline, when I chose it, to me, it's like a very deeply positive thing, fundamentally positive, meaning it's got to be truth focused, 100 percent. It's got to be intense. It's got to be powerful. And so I want to create that media and those events for men and distribute it free to the world. Our content is temporarily behind a paywall, like for a few weeks, we put a speech or something like that. And then right after that, after the early access for those guys, we publish it free to the world. 
full HD, 4K quality, the full presentation. We put out some previews too to get people excited. Uh, little highlight clips from a speech. But at the end of the day, it's the big talks that go viral. So we're kind of like a TED conference for men, minus all the feminist, liberal insanity that you see with that shit at the TED event. But all the content's free to the world. Uh, the events are not, obviously. Those have a, a price tag to them, a premium price tag. Because they're the best events in the world for men, in my opinion. At least in the focus and the design that we're doing in this style. Uh, your events are fucking awesome, too. I went to Grounded Camp you know, not too long ago. That was really... It reminded me of like a super rugged version of 21 Con. It was, just, it was very good stuff up in New York. Yeah, it was a pleasure yeah, to have you there. Yeah, man. But I really want to destroy feminism. And people say that, and they see that, and they, they think it's like hyperbole or something like that. And I understand that, why they say that. But I think this can be done. I think it might even be, there's a couple different avenues I could take. It could just collapse in and itself and we kind of manage that as men and culture. Or we could kind of further that and foster its own destruction where it collapses as a toxic ideology and philosophy that hurts men, women, families, and children, and fucking everybody. So I think it's going to take decades. I don't, it took over well over 100 years to get as bad as it is. And at this point, it's gotten really far, far off the rails. It's fucking nuts. But regardless of how crazy it is, I think it needs to stop. It needs to end. It needs to be replaced with something more positive. And that's, I think, what the Manosphere is doing. And 21Con is at the tip of the spear because we're organizing the premier event for the offline Manosphere, the true heart of the Manosphere. And I see 21 convention, all of them, the fatherhood event, the Poland events, the American events. It was like the pulse of the Manosphere itself. Like, who are the guys who care the most to show up and be the men they want to be? Invest in themselves and then invest in a company and an organization that wants to film that content, the bulk of the, uh, you know, premium content the speeches, and publish that free to the world for everyone to learn from. These talks, as you've probably seen on our channel, they go into the millions sometimes. Usually like 100,000 or 400,000 or something like that. But we have several. We have three now, uh, over a million, and one is at two million. And I want these to keep going viral, more and more of them. I want all the speeches to go, especially your marriage one. That'll be fucking, that'll be great. Uh, publish that and we'll get like a million views on that. And that'll, that'll change lives. Men will see that content and that'll inspire them to do different actions in their life. Not just think about it and all this bullshit, but actually like make a choice, make a different choice than they would have previously before watching it. And that might turn into a family, relationships, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I'm excited for that. I want to see that change. Uh, like we were talking about before the show, like that America is my home and my country, and so is Florida. And I want to see it do the best that it can, uh, not only for myself and the people I care about in my life, but like everybody, uh, whether or not I ever meet them or know them. Because I know for a fact that a long enough time span, that's probably going to affect me or someone I care about. And being back in America after being uh, away for so long, a couple weeks now, uh, it's a good reminder of that, a good vision. And Poland, too, like I was at for the convention, has a really strong uh, community and a strong culture like that. They really love being Polish and taking care of each other. Uh, it's very different from America, where being a fellow American right now in different parts of the country isn't that big of a deal. But there, there's only like 38, 39 million of them in Poland, uh, the Poles, and they have something very positive that we need to get back in America, among the many issues that we need to like work on and fix, things like that. You mentioned one of the issues is feminism. I love all the positive mm -hmm. masculinity, you know, and, and it's, it's very tasteful. It's easy for people to digest. You know, we're, we're moving yeah. forward. We're empowering. We're getting better. We're doing good things. But I also think it's very important also to have something that we're running away from. So it's not only what we aspire to, but what we're uh, yeah. hoping to get rid of or, or move away from. And you describe yeah. your, a part of your mission as destroying feminism. What is that about and why? Well, part of what you just mentioned, what comes to mind immediately is that feminism is in our past and we need to leave it in our past. We need to, I mean, you put it as run away from it. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'd rather watch it burn and then walk away from it, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, feminism is a, is a very toxic ideology. I think it's a, it's a toxic hate and supremacist movement. It's like the worst elements of womankind uh, personified in this like loosely knit movement. So it's really disgusting. It needs to end. Uh, but could you repeat part of your question? I think I missed some of it there. Where do we see some of the negative attributes of feminism creeping into our society? Yeah, I mean, some of the most obvious ones we see are in like pop culture now. Not just pop culture, but in like advertising and stuff. Uh, and that could be like the Gillette commercial, uh, you know, that's attacking men and fathers, all this shit. They're teaching young boys to act like women and to act like girls and to suppress their own masculinity, to view it as toxic, which is bullshit. Not only is it bullshit, it's the exact opposite of reality. Masculinity, I said this in my talk in Poland, masculinity not only built America, it built the world. It built civilization as we know it. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a hell of a lot better than living in the dirt and dying of disease and getting eaten by animals and shit. 
And men and masculinity have been the, at the forefront of doing that. Regardless of what you think about femininity, supporting these things and furthering them and fostering them, uh, that's what masculinity has done. And to deride it as toxic and hateful and, and uh, kind of like demonize it is just absurd bullshit. Uh, and I think it's deliberate too. Um, regardless of what you think about conspiracy theories and things like that. But we see it beyond that. I mean, the APA, the American Psychological Association, put out like a huge thing earlier this year uh, that's kind of formalizing masculinity as being this toxic, uh, this toxic thing. They came very close to calling it a, uh, like a mental illness almost. Yeah. Toxic masculinity, like old school masculinity. So it's just bullshit. But you also see it systemically uh, in like family courts and divorce courts. Uh, like 98% of alimony in this country goes to uh, women, not men. Mm -hmm. uh, women, women over overwhelmingly initiate divorce and then win child custody, uh, which I think is absurd and it's not based on reality or justice or the way the founders intended this country to operate. And that's destructive. That's very horrible. That uh, it puts authority uh, with women in a way that they're not deserving of, and they, it offshoots, it offloads all the responsibility on men. And you see, like child uh, child support be a facilitator of that. But yeah, I think fatherhood's important. I think men are important. I think masculinity is important. Uh, these are the things that defend and protect and build uh, civilization itself. And without that, we have nothing. We have uh, a future that's very dark and very grim. And I don't want that. I want a positive future that's very bright and very positive and very healthy and very uh, reality-based and rational-based. And I think that's what the Manosphere is doing, what we're doing at the conventions, giving these speeches and talking to other men and diving through all the bullshit of feminism that's taught us all this nonsense. Uh, your fans might know that as like blue pill lies. I see blue pill lies basically as feminist lies. Lies you've been taught as a kid about how the world works that have nothing to do with the world, that are deliberately there to you know ruin your mind and ruin the way you think and take you away from reality, the reality that you live in. What are some of those lies? Well, I'd say it's the lies that you're just supposed to find. Like one of them would be like a soulmate myth that you're just going to bump in your soulmate and uh, everything's going to work out no matter what you do. Uh, that your wife or your woman will love you unconditionally. So. If you start out as this alpha badass and become this fat slob, well, true love will just take care of itself. You don't have to take a burden of responsibility and be a badass. Uh, one of the ones that I think is really most damaging is that men and women are equal. And people will hear that, and I'll, I'll call that a myth or a lie, and they'll be like, what? And they'll get angry. But I think that's a really, for me, that, and personally, that was a huge one too, that men and women are not equal. And when people say they're equal, you have to ask, like, what do you equal and what? What do you mean by that? Because she doesn't want to be treated equally. When you're fucking her, she doesn't enjoy that. That's insulting to her. She wants to be dominated and she wants to be loved and protected. Um, and this goes into family too. Like a woman wants you to be your king, to be her king. The king yourself, the king of her, the king of your family. And a king is not an equal footing to the people under him. And this is not, viewing women as absolutely uh, equal and everything in the universe is fucking delusional. We're so different, I, I question even the most basic premise of it, like in the first place, like why do you even think that? Like, who taught you that, that is something uh, that comes to mind when people say this stuff. Uh, so it's a couple of them, but I'd say the equalism, uh, as Rolo would call it, would be a, a huge one. And that men and women are not equal, that we are, in fact, different. And, and that's okay, too, that we're different and we're not equal. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not equal in being able to nurse my children. My ability to produce milk is fucking zero. Uh, my ability to grow a human being inside me is zero. I have no ability or right to do that, but a woman does. And these are things that they excel at that they should excel at. And leadership is not one of them. And uh, I think that's where the equalism thing really comes in and fucks up. It destroys relationships. It betatizes a man. It puts a woman in a control position that she doesn't want to be in. And this is really men and women getting along or not getting along this way is at the cornerstone of like human life and culture. Like how's a family going to be led if you view your wife as equal and she's looking to you to lead? Uh, it's, very, it's very poisonous. That's another thing too, that all these blue pill lies that they'll read about in the red pill community, the manosphere, these things are poison and they don't always hit uh, fast. Oftentimes they hit slowly. They destroy a relationship and a marriage and a family, not over months, but over years. Yeah. Until eventually it's this clusterfuck where someone ends up putting a gun in their mouth and killing themselves. And I hate that crap. It's all necessary and it's all lies and it's all nonsense. And it has nothing to do with like how men and women have gotten along for thousands of years. And uh, it's just delusional crap. What do you think the, the roots of these lies are? Where did this come from? The easiest answer would be feminism itself. Uh, you know, starting out in the 1800s, not the 1900s, like people say, or focus oh. on now. Seneca Falls. I mean, that was like 18, 
1848 or something. It was a hell of a long time ago at this point. But why did that start? And where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, I think men and, wo- men and women have always been competing and that's okay. And I don't think that's, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's very natural for the sexes to compete. Right. Uh, even sex itself could be viewed as a competition or a fight, a fight that she wants to lose and you want to win. And I think things got lost along the way somehow. And uh, we need to fix that. And it did start in America, so that's kind of interesting too. I wonder if uh, I wonder if it goes back to just you know men and women that equalism component kind of getting uh, thrown off course, like derailed, like super, like too equal and super equal like that. But yeah, I'd say feminism, just met women getting together like that, and the worst elements of their kind. It would be like if men got together, like what we do at the manosphere. People will try to call this inverse of feminism, and I'm. I'm not entirely comfortable with that because feminism is this very negative thing. But if you look at it in terms of a mirror and that the manosphere is very positive, this is the best of men getting together to make like a positive future for ourselves and for our countries and our families and stuff. Women is like the opposite of that with what they do with feminism. It's this very negative thing. There's no education. There's no positivity. It's all this victim blame game. It's victim Olympics. Um, it almost seems like it, uh, women lose in that their greatest gift becomes then a curse to be a, to be a mother and to be a home maker, yeah. like you mentioned before, where yeah. that's like, what more important profession could there possibly be on the pl- face of the planet? I agree. To be able to create and nurture and to feed. Yeah. Children. But yeah, then, I'd, I'd say it's easily the negative. Most- it's the most important thing a woman could ever do in her life. I'd say 99% of women. Uh, with so many billions of women, I can't imagine every single one will end up doing that. And some of them might have a calling elsewhere. Like one of my favorite philosophers is Ayn Rand. But for the vast, vast majority of women, that's going to be the most important thing they ever undertake in their life. And yet it's with feminism now, so women get blue pill lies too. I'm focused on men usually, right? And yeah. But yeah, they're told that the motherhood is this like optional thing you can just put off to your like 40 or 39 or some shit. You can freeze your eggs, you can adopt. And there's a lot of good conspiracy theories or whatever you want to call it to focus on this. Like why would you tell women this? This is delusional nonsense. Like babies make you happy. I think think peak femininity, I don't think it's exactly true for men. I think men are different and it's a little bit more complicated. But I think with women, peak femininity is embracing motherhood uh, rationally and truly into the deepest part of your soul and your heart. And for men, I think embracing fatherhood is extremely important too. It's one of the highest expressions of masculinity. But for women, I think motherhood is like the absolute highest. And if they don't, like we're seeing, you know, you see articles all the time. These women end up childless like at 45 or 50 or something. And it hits them that they're childless and alone. And that shit's permanent. And they were told their whole life that, you know, that didn't matter. You can have a sex in the city life. You can eat cheap ice cream and cheap wine and all this shit with your girlfriends and get fucked on the weekend. And it's all nonsense. I'm not a Christian myself or a religious at all, but I view a lot of these mythological these stories as very educational for this stuff and people are ignoring it at their own expense. Mm-hmm. And with women in particular, that's so men and women are different with women. When they hear these blue pill lies, that's why uh, make women great again. 22 convention is so important to me. Uh, women, the consequences for their blue pill lies when they accept them, when they swallow them, uh, these, co- these consequences are typically permanent or they're much harder to undo. And then after a certain biological age, it's definitely fucking permanent. With men, we have a lot more time and malleability, that's the right word, uh, to fix ourselves, to own our shit, to take care of ourselves, to improve, to put blue pill lies and bullshit in the past and focus on a better, stronger future. So yeah, women have it, women have it pretty bad today too. And as a man, I haven't always been focused on that. I've been focused on myself and then what I can relate to easiest, which is other men going through similar problems and challenges in life, especially if they grew up in America or the West somewhere. So the 21 convention that's happening uh, in October is uh, just a few months away. Who are some of the speakers that are going to be there and and what kind of topics are people going to hear about? Men are going to hear about there. Yeah. So I'll be there. Of course, you'll be there. Uh, Jack Donovan will be there, author of The Way of Men. He was just uh, one of our top speakers in Poland. Uh, He is, I think, the preeminent philosopher right now in the world on synthesizing and articulating real masculinity. And he has the masculine virtue, strength, courage, mastery, and honor. And he has all these books he's written on it. He's one of my favorite guys in the world on that. And I think he does a really good job explaining it and being around it or, uh, you know, putting it out. He also does, he did a workshop for us in Poland too that he'll probably do in Orlando, which is really great. 
It was similar to a speech, except it's in private. You did one of them at the Patriarch event. And that shit got really savage. It was really cool to see that. Because there's no cameras rolling at the workshops. There's no recording, no audio, stuff like that. It was just attendees and the speaker going back, back and forth on the masculinity and what he really thinks behind the, uh, or off camera, none of this, in, nothing on Instagram or books or the internet, right? So that was pretty savage. We're also gonna have Ed Lattimore there. He's a retired uh, heavyweight boxer. Uh, he's famous on Twitter for his uh, Twitter rants and the different books he's written. Well, have Alexander J. Cortez. Uh, he's another favorite speaker of mine. He talks a lot about masculinity too. Are you still there? Oh yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to Zoom here. Yeah, so he talks a lot lately about the, uh, it's from that book, uh, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. And he's using these archetypes to build his own uh, kind of book and his ideas on it. And I think he's the, I think he's actually the new face of the Manosphere, AJ Cortez, someone like him. He's very young. He's actually like a year younger than me. I think he's like 30 now. He's just barely 30. And uh, he's one of my favorite guys for learning about masculinity. And he talks about, I mean, one of the things he talks about that's, that's pretty rare in the Manosphere for whatever reason for a long time, he talks about love. Uh, and I think that's, that's really cool too, on top of everything else. Uh, there's a lot of speakers. Beyond that, we have Dr. Robert Glover. I'm not sure if you know him. He's the famous author of No More Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah, that's right. Yep. He's a, fam a family and marriage therapist. He spoke last year at our convention, one of the best speeches. Uh, he helps guys, you know, go from being a nice guy, a fucking pushover pansy, the fake nice guy with covert contracts, right. to learning how to be assertive and masculine. We'll have Dr. Sean T. Smith there, another psychologist. Uh, he spoke last year at the convention. He's a good friend. He wrote a book called The Tactical Guide to Women, which I love. And that's kind of how to find, well, it's navigating women, right? And for, what is it? The subtitle is uh, Managing Risk in Marriage and Dating, I believe. And that's really what he does. He helps men avoid uh, toxic relationships and get into healthy relationships. And then from there, if you want to build a family and whatever, that's what he's good at and what, he, what he's best at. Well, have Hunter Drew there. He was our chief patriarch, our top speaker at the patriarch convention you spoke at. Uh, he's always focused on family and fatherhood, whether it's at the patriarch edition or at the main event. He brings that, uh, that torch uh, to the forefront. Well, have Socrates there, a very good friend of mine. He's spoken at the convention for a long time. He's our, uh, one of our top veteran speakers at this point. And he focuses on relationships and uh, helping men build and develop fundamental relationship skills. His book is called The Map, Navigating the Sexual Marketplace. And uh, it's fucking it's an awesome, dude. He's one of my favorite guys in the world. He's also a professional architect. So he brings that for like 15, 20 years now. He builds these huge buildings, airports and shit. So he brings that element of graphic design and that very complex thought process to relationships, but conveys it in a simple way for men to understand. If there's anyone in the world other than yourself that cares about marriage and relationships, it's this guy. Uh, he brings that, that's his candle, his relationships. That he brings the torch. Tanner Guzzi will be there. Uh, I think he's most passionate about, he's actually Mormon, one of our, I think he's our, only, he's our only Mormon speaker with a few Mormon attendees. And I think what he cares about most in the world is actually family and fatherhood, but that's not what he's best known for. He spoke about that at Patriarch, mm -hmm. but what he's best known for is uh, style and appearance and masculinity. So he helps men understand the blue pill lies they've been fed, the bullshit they've been fed. In this case, not necessarily by feminism, but I think a degenerate culture more widely. Like in Poland and Europe, they dress like really well. And it's not this fashion, like weird bullshit usually. It's a, it's, a, it's a care about style and that men should care about style and the way they appear. And it's not just some, uh, it's not just some bullshit you can slack off about, which is what I thought for a long time. I know in the pickup artist community, that was a big deal, but you could just like focus on your game and your skills and all the shit and your style didn't matter. And technically that's true, but that's really far, far from optimal. Whether it's your business, a family or life or with women, the way, you, the way you appear matters. The way you uh, address yourself really matters. And T Tanner is excellent at that, dispelling all the common myths about that stuff and then helping you, you know, figure out how to dress the best you can. Donovan Sharp will be there. Uh, he's the host of uh, the Red Man Group, top host, badass guy. Ivan Throne, the dark triad man. He's good at helping you understand the usefulness of dark triad personality traits, uh, which typically are very destructive, uh, especially if you didn't develop them on purpose and they just kind of dominate how you think and how you live. Uh, so that's what psychopathy. What does that actually mean? What are the, what's the dark triad? That's psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and I think the third one's malevolence, if I'm not mistaken. But psychopathy, for example, that would be developing, that would be like in business, someone doing some really savage shit that would appear unempathetic, but doing it in a way that's purposeful and positive. So people, for, uh, so people, for example, claim Trump is uh, a narcissist all the time. 
the guy look at this raging, arrogant narcissist on Twitter and whatever else he does. I don't think he is. Uh, I think that accusation and people trying to, you know, clinically diagnose him as a, as a psychopath or as a narcissist is ridiculous. He's, he acts narcissistically on purpose to, for goals that he has. It's strategic. Um, he might, for example, in his businesses too, back in the day, he went through different bankruptcies and different things. And I'm sure those really difficult challenges for him to overcome. And he pissed off a lot of people doing it. And they thought he was this big bully or he had no empathy and these different things. But that's not true. I think he's someone who developed dark triad personality traits to be used on purpose at selective times. And for him, that's been super effective. I think that's in part how he became president, how he became the successful man that he is by using them rather than letting, it, letting them use him. Mm -hmm. If they used him, that would be something different, like Bernie Madoff, uh, lying to your family and manipulating your family. The same traits, you know, the same kind of manipulations, but in a much darker sense that I don't think he had command over. And that's why he's in jail and he was trying to kill himself, I think, a couple of times and all these things like that. So Ivan Throne is really good at understanding these from like a uh, like cultural and a personal perspective and learning how to use them on purpose uh, for your life in a positive and, and productive way. Does that make sense? Yeah, amazing. It's interesting because just yesterday I was, a thought came to me about how we pathologize personalities. Uh, someone called me a narcissist the other day because of something that I said and did, and I, I had to agree. I said, yeah, you know, if you're going to pathologize my personality uh, based on the choices that I make because I think they're right, yeah. um, then you essentially what we're doing is we're uh, – we're patholo patholo pathologizing personalities that are evident throughout all of history. Men have always been this way. Yeah. Uh, so for example, even like the Greek gods, like it, even the gods of our current religions, they're all, they're all narcissistic or they're all uh, whatever it is that you want to call, you know, label you want to give it, but it's what made them successful. It's what made them great. Yeah. So it's interesting that you <laughs> That you brought that up because it was just something that I was thinking about the other day. We want to give these, we want to, uh, we want to give a, uh, a prescription or we want to give a diagnosis for something that is um, not necessarily bad, but can be used in a bad way. But also, like any weapon, like a, you know, guns aren't necessarily bad, but they can be used in a bad way. And the same thing with these right. personality traits, like you're saying, they can be used for great things. They're tools. So. Uh, it's kind of negative unless, unless you become the tool and the tool uses you So I don't think you're doing that though. I, I agree these people I get these questions. I get these accusations all the time too. Uh, a narcissist a psychopath a sociopath like all this bullshit Yeah, you know, I'm gonna do what I think I'm gonna do what I think's right and I'm gonna do that in a way that respects people people's rights around me um, Things like that and boundaries. That's part of what being That's part of being an adult human being is respecting boundaries But still being able to leverage these personality traits the best you can and that's also, too, it's a good you mentioned that. That's what feminism does in masculinity. Toxic masculinity, independent of the APA and their shit that's more recent, feminism with toxic masculinity, they're trying to pathologize and label and quarantine uh, the best element of mankind, which is masculinity, the most powerful element that's, that's the source of creation uh, for all of civilization and for families and for governments and for companies and for books and for works of art and everything. These things come from masculinity itself. And they want to quarantine that and shut it down. And that's why people accuse you of that. They want to shut you up and shut you down. They want to hammer your psychology and your, and your thinking and dominate your mind and get you to stop what you're doing. And you're, of course, Elliot fucking Hulse. You just keep doing what you're going to do. Strong as fuck. <laughs> um, about, I, I got to say, man, you know, when I met you earlier this year, uh, I didn't really know what to expect. And I wasn't like some fan or anything like that. I was aware of you for years. But meeting you, I was like, man, this motherfucker's strong as fuck and savage as fuck. And it was a real pleasure again to know you this year and meeting you there. And it was a big, it was a big reality check for me too, that my expectations were so like non-existent or whatever going to meeting you. I was like, wow, I really judged the wrong way on this. And that's that strength that you have. And that's why I think you battle back against that crap that you've gotten. I've gotten a lot over the years. I can only imagine what you've gotten above and beyond. You have so many views on your channel and shit. Must be like a fucking army of bullshit in your inbox. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it can be. And it was a pleasure for me to speak at your Patriarch event. I was, uh, it was an honor to be invited. And yeah. I was just reviewing the video once again. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be called lots of different names based on the things that I say in that. So 
pretty excited about that. Pretty excited to be speaking at your next events also too, man. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's pretty exciting to be able to speak on these topics that are typically swept under the rug or, or, or spoken about in like, you know, yeah. chat rooms and stuff like that. Like we're really, we're bringing it to the forefront. Yeah, 21 Con is a, is a sacred space, man. It's a male space. It's a masculine space, too. So it's not just for men. It's for masculine men and for men who want to be more masculine and be the best self, their best selves. Also, too, we had even more speakers. Uh, like we're gonna, I'm adding even more, too, beyond that, like I told you before the show. We also have Goldman Unleashed, George Bruno that you know from his channel at George Bruno, mm -hmm. Steve the Dean Williams, Pat Campbell, a huge radio host uh, up north, and uh, another and Ken Curry is another licensed uh, marriage and family yeah. therapist. And Bobby Dino, uh, a good new friend of mine, he spoke at the Patriarch event for his first time. So yeah, we're, it's, it, keeps, it keeps growing. Rich Graham we're about to announce too. The Navy SEAL is gonna speak at the event uh, on stage, not just a workshop. So it keeps growing and it's a four day conference too, man. So it's fucking huge. It's uh, like you were there for a, a huge chunk of it. And I appreciate that at the Patriarch, which was three days. This one's four days plus, um, you know, Wednesday night. So it's like five, like four and a half days, basically. And it's well, nonstop speeches and action. Yeah, man. So what is the experience like or what has been some of the feedback from attendees? Yeah, so we've had over a thousand attendees now uh, over the past 13 years and 17 events. Poland was 17 and it's unanimously positive. The guys who attend, uh, they fucking love it. Every single time, every guy I talk to. Even guys who come in skeptics, they don't know what to expect. They're kind of, you know, maybe upset with something going on behind the scenes or whatever. These guys are always just so positive, enthusiastic about it. And it's not like some bullshit, like hoopla, like, you know, rah, 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 we're excited. That's part of it, which is fun. But there's a much deeper element, which makes that, I think, good and positive. And it's that there's real change going on. These men are transformed what they go through on that weekend, like grounding camp. 21 Con grounds them in a different way. It grounds them intellectually and gives them the weapons and tools and knowledge they need to succeed in life. And not just that, like the content, the speeches, that's what people see on YouTube and they think that's the event and it's not. Like you saw that at the Patriarch event. That's a, like a chunk of the event. That's what's on camera, the lights, camera, action. But really what goes on is on the breaks, it's on the dinners we have. They get dinner with part of their event. Uh, they get to go to different parties we have, different meet and greets. They get to go to workshops that are included as well with the, the ticket uh, throughout the event. Those are not filmed and those are private. They're much more intimate. It's limited to like 20, 30 guys a pop. So top to bottom, start to finish, the experience is fucking incredible. I'm absolutely obsessed with making it the best event I can. I've been working on it 17 times now, 17 successful events. And the Orlando event these guys can attend will be the 18th 21 convention. And each time we've done it, like some of the speakers have noted, like Jack Donovan and AJ Cortez, it gets better and better and better and better. Whether it's a young men's event for under 21, the Patriarch Fatherhood event, or the flagship main event. All of them are just at the deepest part of my heart. I love it. I love it more than anything in the world, this company, this organization, this event. I realized that a couple of years ago when I got divorced. I was like, what's the thing I love most in my life? And I realized it wasn't a woman. It was always my company more than anything. And so I put my heart and soul into this every fucking day typically seven days a week, sometimes six. And I, I do bring my, I bring my game every time this event and everything I have, every ounce of uh, soul and willpower I put into it. And they feel that at the event, they feel that from the speakers who care, they care about speaking they care about the mission. They care about the men. They care about uh, the issues surrounding the event. They care about the manosphere and the community and all the challenges these men are going through that are very similar to what we all go through as men, regardless of where you're from and what you go through in life. So the experience is uh, absolutely phenomenal. And I guarantee it'll be one of the best weekends of the life and I'll never look back on it except uh, positively and for information and things like that. They also get the videos free too, not only on YouTube, but when they attend, they get um, like premium recordings on 21 university. That's like a little Netflix we built. So we take care of everything. I'm very much inspired by Steve jobs and Apple. I love the way they've always integrated all their products together and make it like a cohesive one price, uh, you know, one thing. And so those, they don't, people attend the convention, they don't get upsold like these like workshops and little things here and there. They buy one ticket and they attend the conference and they get basically everything. The only thing they can buy upgrade is like VIP, the front row seating and an extra dinner. Other than that, it's like super simple and it's an incredible experience that I've been working on for well over a decade now. Yeah, and I have to attest to the quality, man. You've done a great job. I get invited to speak at events all the time and for the past five years, I've just been declining, declining, declining. I'd just rather not travel. I'd rather not 
leave my family. And most of the time, the events that are being held just don't have the interest for me. And I'm proud to say that I'm very much invested in and I, uh, I love the content. I love the mission. I love what you're doing there. And of course, the quality of the event is, is great. And I'm really looking forward to speaking there Thanks. again in October, man. Fuck yeah. I'm looking forward to it, man. Bring you back on stage. Yep. So what does the future for the 21 convention look like? What is your dream? Yeah, I have many dreams, right? Middle name is Dream. I'm, I'm about to legally change my name from Anthony Paul Johnson to Anthony Dream Johnson. I was waiting to get back from Poland because passport shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and that has a lot of meaning to me. People think it's, it is funny, like it's a funny name and it really triggers the shit out of people. But we'll get into that later. So the future of the convention is strong. I really think that in the 2020s, it's going to blow up even bigger than it is. Our channel is not as big as yours. It's got about 210,000 subscribers, something like that. Uh, proud to hit six digits. You know, we'll see where it goes. But I want to keep the events are really at the heart of the, the company and the organization. The videos and channels are an a offshoot of that, children off of that. So next year, we're going to do three events again, like we did three events this year. We had the fatherhood event, Patriarch. We did the Poland event in Europe. And now we're doing the main event at the end of the year. So 2020, we're going to do three events again. We do the fatherhood event first, and we're going to combine it with the 22 convention, Make Women Great Again. That'll be at the same hotel at the same time. So if you, need a, if you have a girlfriend or wife, you got to get fixed up. You just send her down the hallway. <laughs> and if you're a woman and your husband's a beta, you know, fat beta dork, and you want to fix them up into an alpha badass, that's where you send them. And uh, we, that'd be the first time we do two events at the same time in the same hotel. And you won't be allowed to attend uh, both events, you know, once for men, once for women. But it'll be going on at the same time. I'm excited to do that for the first time ever. I think that'll be pretty historic to do a second Patriarch edition. Tanner Guzzi is the keynote, the chief Patriarch of that one. And I think that's, that's, that's fitting and right. That's fate meant to be. After that, we're doing another event in Poland. We just filmed a trailer for it. We're doing it in Krakow this time uh, in the southern part of uh, Poland. So a little bit different than the capital of north. And that's actually right near, it's an amazing city. I spent about a week there at the end. It was just fucking incredible. I went to a castle and shit. It's also near Auschwitz, the notorious uh, death concentration camp. And that was, a, that, was a incredibly, that was an incredible experience. Brutal, disturbing, but also like very vivid, a vivid reminder of how important life is and how valuable it is and family and all these issues that we work on and how positive that can be and how negative that can go too. So after that, we'll do a final event again at the end of the year in Orlando. That's where the event was founded, obviously, many years ago. And it's where I like doing the event best. It's easiest to make it the biggest and best that it can be rather than trying to do it remotely in another state, which we've done, but Orlando's a home base. So we'll do four events in 2020. And beyond that, I want to raise capital, millions of dollars, and build 21 Studios, an entire conference production facility in Central Florida, and do all kinds of events for ourselves and for other speakers and things like that. Build like a huge camp, kind of like what uh, Rich Graham's doing, Deep Woods USA, for shooting and stuff, except with a giant conference center that Socrates will design. So we're talking to venture capitalists right now, actually. And this year has been a year where that's actually gotten some real interest and in, from these kind of people. And that's what I want to do. I want to build a, a building that we can't get kicked out of. No matter how positive the culture is, like, like right now I feel pretty good with Trump as president. Things are fucking great, better than they've ever been. But in the event that shit hits the fan later in uh, future American history and people want to shut us down, I want to make sure that we have our own facility and that we're as safeguarded and protected as we can to keep doing conferences and filming them, have everybody come in, things like that. So that's the dream. I want to build a huge production facility called 21 Studios. That's always been actually the intention since 2015 when we started using that. But I didn't, I didn't reveal that until the 10-year anniversary in 2017. And uh, I want to build that, have Socrates build it. And probably about, we have three phases of it, but the highest one right now is $25 million, uh, for the final product to, to build that and do that. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, man. So uh, before we part ways, you know, you're deeply invested in this, uh, the red pill and manosphere and you've got all these, you're surrounded by all these authors and speakers and experts and you're reading lots of books. Uh, given your, your knowledge and your experience, what is some of the best advice that you have for men in our culture today? I would say pick something you believe in, make a choice and then fight to the fucking death for it. That's something that happened for me recently. That's, a, that's happened throughout my life with this company. I've had to fight for it at various points. Um, I think you can relate to that in your own business and things you've had to go through. But the Poland event in particular was a very difficult uh, concentration of issues to pull off. 
The European events always are. Anything international, Australia, Europe. This one was particularly difficult to pull off. It was the most intense fight in my life. And I dug in, dug my heels down, gripped my teeth, and I fucking won. And I feel like a new man. I feel reborn. And uh, it's not the first time I've been through that kind of, that little process, that cycle. I think it's a big cycle of life that heroes journey to go through. But that comes down to making a choice. And it's what kind of man are you going to be? And what are you, what are you going to believe in? What are you going to believe in so strongly you would die for it? Not that you want to die. I don't want to die. I want to live. And I want to build a family and do, build all these amazing things. I want to create, not just destroy feminism. I want to create too. Right. I want to create more than I want to destroy. That's why I put that first. Create positive media for men, destroy the feminist establishment. But both are important. But to do either one of those, uh, or especially both at the same time, you've got to dig as deep as you can. You've got to be the strongest man you can and make a choice. And then fight tooth and nail to win that thing you believe in. That you believe in more d- deeply enough to die for. Yeah. So what are the best ways for, uh, for people to learn about the 21 convention, about yourself, and just get involved with the Manosphere? Yeah. So they can go to youtube.com slash 21. That's youtube.com slash 21. That's our main channel, 21 Studios. We have thousands of free videos, hundreds of free speeches. Yours will be there soon for free from the Patriarch event, everything like that. Beyond that, they can get tickets at, in a link beneath your video or at the 21convention.org all the time. And they can follow me personally on Twitter at twitter.com slash beachmuscles and Instagram at beachmuscles65. Uh, it's my old name for a football coach gave me, and people seem to enjoy that quite a lot. <laughs> awesome. Anthony, thank you so much for spending some time with us here today talking about the 21 convention. Really looking forward to the next event. And uh, if you're watching this or listening to this, I hope to meet you there. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate your time, man. Bring me on. Got it, Anthony. Thanks, buddy.